Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to work on some left-hand lead material for my book, Advanced Coordination for Drum Set and Hand Percussion. So most of this material comes from page 32, so if you have the book, turn to that. I'll post it on the screen here. And this is left-hand lead, so some people call it open style. I practice a lot like this. It really strengthens that left hand. It doesn't matter if you're playing traditional grip or match grip, either way. But if you'll look closely at the way I'm doing these rhythms, let's look at uh, rhythm number one on page 32 and just watch the left hand. So you'll see kind of a whipping motion and it's tip shaft. So the tip of the stick and then the shaft coming down. So your hand's doing this kind of motion, a rocking motion. Also you're clinching, so the fingers and the thumb, the first two fingers and the thumb are grabbing the stick, and the bottom two fingers regulate that stick. Another version of this uh, is what I was just playing, is this. And then you could improvise with your right hand, but. So it's one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. It sounds different if you're not uh, counting it on the, on the right beat. So now that you see that motion, you can also do it with match grip. So. Um, I find it harder to do with match grip here. It's just a flick of the wrist. The match grip, you got to kind of really work. So I play most of these traditional. But it's great for developing, you know, doubles. Uh, just strength in that left hand. Okay? And obviously, they're fun grooves to play. I use them on gigs a lot. It leaves that right hand uh, free to roam around the drums. You could use a right hand hi-hat with a pedal, but I always find those kind of sluggish because of the cable. So I don't really like those too much. Uh, but I will use a closed hi-hat at times on my right hand. But this works best for me. So if we look at page 32, let's go through some of these ostinatos. Here's number one. And actually, let me put the metronome on so you have a reference to the beat. So this is about, uh, it's in cut time. You feel it in cut time. But we'll just do it as written in four, a quarter note equals 108. Here we go. Here's number one, one, two, three, four. Here's number two, one, two, three, four. So those are the first four. Now, number five actually switches. It goes on the beat. So here's number five. One, two, three, four. Here's number six. One, two, three, four. Seven, one, two, three, four. And number eight, one, two, three, four. So those are the eight ostinatos I use for developing this kind of open thing in a, in a Brazilian 
uh, music kind of setting. Now, one thing you got to remember, uh, and that's important, and hopefully you can see my hi-hat foot, is I'm not lifting my foot off of the uh, pedal too much, just a tiny little bit. If you can watch, I'm sure it's barely perceptible that I'm um, just, just taking the weight off my foot. You don't want to do this. That's not the right way to do it, okay? Just slightly open it so they're just, just loose. So. or even less. So, very small motions. Now, let's talk about how to work on this, how to develop it. So, like all things we've done in these videos and with my book, I always start on pages seven and eight with those rhythms. And you could use any rhythms in any books to do this. I have lots of rhythms in my book. Uh, later on, we'll do a hard one in the back. But we start with page seven. And what you want to do is just do this slowly and start with number one, the uh, first rhythm that we did from page 32, which is this. And put the metronome on. And you might want to put the metronome on 16ths at first. I'll show you what that would sound like. So that's the first line of page seven. And you just want to proceed, you know, one bar at a time, repeat it over and over, all through that page. That's the first page that you should do. If you have trouble with that, you can uh, just keep adding rhythms to one measure, like this. And so on. See, each, I'm taking the first bar, that was just the first bar, and each time I do it and I get comfortable, I add another beat. And that's one way to practice these. It's going to take a while. Just be patient. And then you want to play through the whole page. And when you do that, you can use the toms. So let that right hand wander around the drums. You know, it doesn't, it'll be different every time. It doesn't have to be the same thing. But just so you get that movement, because that movement is a different kind of coordination, and it will throw you off. So let's try a little of that. I'll, I won't do the whole page, but we'll uh, see what, how it goes. One, two, three, four. That's the first three lines. And we'll do the same with page eight. So that's uh, the first two lines or so, okay? You get the idea. Now, you can do these very fast. And if you do them fast, start out on the snare drum. So here's page eight, fast. And we'll, we'll double this up. We'll do it pretty quick. One, two, three, four. Again, the first two lines or so. And you see it's nice and relaxed. You don't want to get tight. Don't use your shoulder to play. Just, just uh, uh, relax. And 
you're going to keep it low when you play fast. Now, there's another rhythm that we need to talk about, which is really good for developing some left-hand chops. Oops. And that's on page 31. So Frevo, uh, it's, it's a Brazilian rhythm played by the Kasha, which is their snare drum, which goes like this. <laughs> There's a way to do that with one hand, with your left hand, that sounds like this. You see there, I'm, I'm moving kind of in a circle, all right? And I'm doing that buzz, so, uh, well, let's just show you in slow motion, that would help. So I'm throwing out the buzz, and I'm turning my wrist down. I really find this is a tremendous exercise for strengthening the wrist and the fingers, and also when you play jazz. get all those really cool buzzes, and this develops that. So it's a great exercise. It also sounds cool. I use it a lot for a rhythm called Manaka 2, which sounds like this. All right, and so that left hand's going in. Normally I'd play that on some of go, go bells, which I don't have here, with my right hand. But right now I'm playing it on the toms. So that's a really great thing to practice. And that, that's the whole page of 31 with all these different ostinatos. And then again, the right hand would play uh, the rhythms from page 7, 8, 9, 10, and all those. Now, if we go to page 49 and 50, you can actually see how these grooves look written out. This section of the book uh, is Brazilian grooves, and there's lots and lots of grooves here. And number five and number six on page 49 are sambas, but with left-hand lead. So I'll play number five for you. I'll play number six for you. This this one can go pretty quick. And it uses the other hi-hat rhythm. So all right. And then if you go to the next page, page 50, I have uh, what I call upbeat sambas. Uh, there's kind of an emphasis on the upbeat. So this is um, number one, upbeat samba. So. And this is number two, which is much quicker. Many, many more of these um, rhythms. Yeah, even at the pay, uh, bottom of page 50, you see this batucada samba. So that sounds like this. I'm improvising a little, but that's the basic rhythm. So all through this section, you'll see these rhythms. Now, for a final test is, uh, for my students, what I do is I go to the end of the book, and there's a page there, page 183, which is extremely difficult. It's a mix of quarter notes, let's move this, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenths, and tied rhythms. 
So on those tied rhythms, again, you can use that motion where you're pushing the stick in the head and releasing. And that creates that coordination. But this time we do it with the right hand. So the right hand is playing those rhythms. So I'll play a little of this for you so you can hear how that works. And this is a tough page, so I definitely suggest practicing it. So we'll do the same tempo, 108. One, two, three, four. So that's most of it. You get the idea. But you see how those rhythms are slurred. And that, again, with either hand, creates a whole other world of coordination. So that'll do it for this. Uh, again, it's a really great thing to practice. It's something that I find myself doing all the time for maintenance. You know, my old hands tend to be pretty stiff. Uh, they, you know, they stiffen up. As you get older, your hands are going to stiffen up, just a warning. So this kind of stuff really keeps me loose. And I try to do left hand lead every day. So I suggest that you, you do that too. So I'll just play a little for you and we'll see you next time.